Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I am a master's student here at the University of Oxford studying history and today I wanted to start a little weekend in my life. I'm currently writing an essay so I figured this would probably be a good time to take you guys along so I can kind of walk you through the process but I also wanted this to be a little bit more of an interactive vlog. I've been trying to change up my editing style so that way none of my vlogs are like entirely the same. Some of my videos are going to be more b-roll heavy to show you guys a little bit more what I'm doing and and then videos like this are going to be a little bit more interactive and in that I'm going to be talking to you guys about certain things that I've been asked on Instagram or in the comment section of my videos. And today I'm going to be talking particularly about how I'm writing my essays and how I prepare my essays. And on top of that, I had a comment on my last video asking for me to talk a little bit about journaling. I currently use my Supplied by Lily Astrology notebook or journal. I'm going to link it down below. I love this notebook. I love the Supply by Lily stationery line. So I've been really enjoying this and what I've been trying to do is every couple days I will pull out my journal and write some things that I'm thinking about and sometimes there's the pressure to write a full page and I think what you need to do is just write the things that are on your mind less so feeling like you have to fill out a full page like today I only filled out a half page and then perhaps my next entry will be a full page or one and a half pages or more. I think journaling is a great way to kind of assess where you're at and that's why I really enjoy doing YouTube as well as having my journal because it's a way for me to catalog the things that I'm going through especially when I'm in this kind of pivotal moment in my life. I have applied for PhD programs that I'm currently waiting to hear back. I should start getting decisions back as early as next week. So it's a very nerve wracking time for me and my future is rather uncertain. I have a lot of responsibilities here as a graduate student. There's a lot of things I want to do with my YouTube, Instagram, and eventually hopefully start a podcast. So there's just a lot of things that I want to do even while I am a graduate student to help other students, including building up my counseling business. I offer consultations. I offer free consultations for 30 minutes to anyone who wants help with undergraduate admissions as well as master's admissions at Oxbridge. Just keep that in mind. If you guys ever want some help, just shoot me an email and we can schedule a consultation. But overall, I have a lot of things on my plate and a lot of things on my mind therefore so I have been using my journal as a way to write that down as well as using YouTube as a way to also flesh out my experiences and what's on my mind. I also use journaling as a form of self-talk so what I mean by that is that I will use my journal to kind of give myself advice. Sometimes it's helpful if you can try to remove yourself from your own circumstances and your own reality. So if my friend were in the position that I am right now, what advice would I give them? And so what I try to do in my journal is give myself that advice that I would have given a friend. And that has really helped me and has really helped me get through some really tough times. So that's something I would suggest about journaling. I don't really have a super set schedule. It's really just, I try to do it in the mornings, every couple days and sometimes it's every other day, sometimes it's every day, sometimes it's once a week. I'm trying to do it a little bit more than I used to and the way that I do that is instead of doing it in the evening, I've been doing it first thing in the morning. I'm currently in the process of beginning work on my essay and once I have a solid idea of where I'm at with it, then I will show you. I'm pretty much gonna start with the outline and I'm also gonna start thinking about what I wanna use as my hook. I had a particular 17th century quote that I was using before, but because I wanna shift the focus of my paper just a little bit, I think I'm gonna use a different example. So I typically start all of my essays with a quote, um, with a primary source. And so that's what I'm gonna be looking for right now. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so I've been working for a couple hours. I think I have a general structure for the essay. The essay that I'm currently writing is an expanded version of a previous essay that I had written, but there's certain sections that I wanna to add to it. 
So I'm looking at the origin of slave laws in the British Atlantic. So looking at the British American colonies and the British Caribbean, primarily during the 17th century, and looking at what historians have said about the origins and kind of which legal precedents the colonists were borrowing from, if they were borrowing from it at all. I want to also add a discussion about the difference between the establishment of laws and using precedent, but also how economic factors play into that and kind of what is the point in which laws are then enacted because human beings have been enslaving others since pretty much the beginning of humanity. <laughs> and so establishing a legal code for slavery basically is taking it a step further. But that's not to say that all colonists kind of follow law or that they even needed laws in order to enslave others. So anyway, it's kind of difficult to explain, but the general gist is I'm adding a section kind of explaining why laws were enacted and how they were enacted and then I want to go into different precedents. I just went down to Gale's. I picked up some lunch. I just have a mozzarella sandwich. So I'm going to eat, take a little bit of a break, watch a YouTube video or two, eat some lunch and keep working. By the way, if you guys have any interest in what I do when I take my breaks, I'm currently watching a lecture or book talk with David Blight and Ta-Nehisi Coates about Frederick Douglass. Uh, it was a lecture put on by the Gilder Lehrman Center. So I'm watching this or listening to this lecture while also digging through footnotes. And that is how I know I am meant to be an academic. Alright, so I'm back from the library and I've been doing a little bit of work and I'm actually making quite a bit of progress. I was looking at some of the feedback that I got from one of my professors on my original essay and he said try to see if there's a way to track historiographical trends within the particular like subsets of arguments. So in order to kind of track that, what I do is that I brain map. And so what I'll do is I will write out a kind of diagram of the central argument and then kind of what I think the arguments around that are and those will act as my body paragraphs. So for example, the middle says the origin of slave laws in the British Atlantic, which is the title of the paper, and then looking at say based on Roman law, borrowed from France or Spain, economic factors and colonial invention, or that there was a basis in common law. I also put other, but there didn't really seem to be any other particular arguments. And then what I'll do from there is as I go and read the articles, as historians make arguments that I could use in the paper, I will then write their name and the date of that paper. And then I will then make a timeline to show kind of where they fall. And that kind of helps me just visually map out how the paper is going to kind of be organized. That's kind of, that kind of acts as my outline. If, and then I will go into my essay notes, which is where I have pulled quotes and pulled sources. And then I will kind of have that next to where I'm writing the essay. So that way I have something to kind of go off of. And also typing out all of the quotes from the books is super helpful because then all you have to do is copy paste it over into the essay. So just, <coughs> just a little hint for you guys as you write your own essays. But now my cough for some reason is really bad. So I'm actually gonna take a break because I've actually made a lot of progress. And, <coughs> and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Good morning everyone, so it is the next day. I got up this morning, had a bit to eat, did a little bit of work, and then honestly was just so tired from staying up really late last night that I decided I would just take another nap before brunch so that way I could power through and I'm really glad I did that because I feel a lot better now and I'm about to head off to brunch in hall with my friends then I'm gonna go get a coffee go to the graduate study space and then I have to make a quick trip to the Vera Harmsworth library I have to pick up yet another book so 
that is the plan for today. I need to get my paper finished today. Um, I have about, I'd say about 2,000 words left, um, which I'm not too worried about so far. The draft is coming along pretty well, um, but I just want it to be as perfect as it can be because obviously it's my first graded mark here at Oxford and I would like to graduate with the distinction since hopefully I'm starting my PhD program next year and I'm sure that's going to be contingent on me doing well in this program. But that all being said, I went out with my friends last night to, well, the MCR here at Somerville had a bop last night, which for Americans is basically just a party or a kickback. There was music and dancing and there was alcohol, but I didn't really drink because I am still getting over being really sick. And so I thought all it takes is one bad night to send you back spiraling and I cannot afford to be sick anymore. I just, I can't handle it. So I decided to abstain from drinking alcohol and drank lots of water and just stayed up late and hung out with my friends, which was honestly really fun. I'm really glad that I did that because I honestly would have regretted missing out on it. I think it's really important to have a balance between your academic work, but also creating memories and having personal experiences. And the MCR events are something that I don't want to miss out on, especially because I'm only here for a year. And although I never brought, I never went out, I never partied when I was at UCLA, there was also not a lot of events that I really felt like I was missing out on. Whereas here, they're quite tame, and <laughs> quite wholesome, um, especially for graduate students. So I try to attend as many events as possible, like welfare teas and bops and wine and cheese exchanges and formal dinners and that kind of stuff because it's all part of the Oxford experience and I don't want to miss out. So that all being said, I'm going to go ahead and pack up my bag because I'm going to grab brunch and go straight to the study space because if I come back to my room, then who knows how productive I would actually be. So I think it's important to change up your study space as much as possible, even though I need to actually listen to my own advice a little bit more because I tend to just stay in my room. I'm going to go to the graduate study space today and we're gonna have a good productive day. That is my plan. So let's get into it. So it's now been a little while and I'm still working in the study space. Everybody has left or at least for a little while. Um, so I have the room to myself. So I just wanted to check in really quick. I am about a thousand words into the essay out of about 5,000. And that doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't part pieces that haven't already been written. I'm just kind of rewriting to make sure that I'm getting everything that I need because I'm adding two whole new sections but I picked up some of the books that I thought would be helpful from the Vera Harmsworth. And I'm just gonna keep chipping away. Um, it's slowly, it's going well. I just, one of my, one of the comments my professor made was to add a little bit more context as to what sources they're using. So I'm trying to write a whole section about the methodologies that the historians are using, but also making a clear differential between social and legal historians as well as legal scholars, because I'm also trying to track historiographical trends. And if you guys don't know what that means, that basically just means that there are certain like schools of thought within the scholarship that we try to follow. So that all being said, I think somebody's about to walk in the room, so I'm gonna keep working.
All right, so it is about seven o'clock. I went out to grab some pizza with my friends as a little treat in between finishing my essay. So I'm just back in my room because nobody else is studying in the study space. So I figured I would come back to my room and I'm just gonna keep working. So I decided to take a break because I feel brain dead. And now I have zero motivation to get up and finish because I have honestly put in so much effort into this essay and I'm actually really happy with it. It seems, I feel like it's some of the best work I've actually ever done. But now I just don't have enough to keep going. So I'm not quite sure what to do. I think like everything in me is telling me that I want to go to sleep. But then I'm not going to have enough time tomorrow unless I woke up super early. And you know the game where you tell yourself you're going to wake up early to get work done and then you wake up in the morning and you reason with yourself as to why you're allowed to sleep another hour or two. Like I know that's what's going to happen. So I do need to actually get this done tonight. I just want to sleep. Maybe I'll nap. Maybe I'll take a nap and then I'll keep working. It's not that late, so I could probably nap without falling asleep. Like entirely. Right? All right, so by some miracle, I managed to pry myself out of bed. I lay down for like 45 minutes and just tried to do anything that wasn't thinking about this paper. But I'm now back on a roll and I am actually really happy with how this paragraph is turning out. I feel like I'm like close to being done. Um, it is currently 11.45. So I've basically been working since 11 this morning. Um, I mean, I've taken breaks obviously, but I am about, I would say about a thousand words from being done. I'm at th about 3,500 words currently. Um, but my plan is I'm going to finish this paragraph. I'm going to wait to write the conclusion in the morning. I also have to write up an annotated bibliography, which shouldn't be too hard. Um, but I need to get that done before my meetings tomorrow. This is what happens when you are a perfectionist and also somebody that works really well under pressure. I, for one, will just keep reading and will keep doing research up until the moment when I really do need to get my work done. But then I get into these situations where I'm up really late. But I honestly wouldn't have it any other way. I don't think I could do it any other way. I've tried to get assignments done early and I just don't, they don't turn out as well. Um, and that's not to say that I just like leave everything to last minute. I do research, I write sections, I do my notes and everything. So that way I have everything that I need. And then I'm just a just massive perfectionist about my prose. And I just want it to flow really nicely. I'm really critical about the way that I write, especially because I had a really good supervisor in undergrad and he really helped me make my writing better. And obviously it still has a long way to go, but I, I feel like it has come a long, long way. So I'm just really picky about my writing and I just want it to be the best that it can be. But I'm going to go ahead and finish up this paragraph and go to bed and then wake up early and finish up the conclusion and the annotated bibliography. And then I have to go to my meeting and then I still have to edit this video and get that up before I have to get all my readings done for Tuesday. So time management people, it's important. I think it's ironic that people ask me about my time management skills and here we are. But.
with that all being said, I have been working on this for like months. And now I'm going to be quiet and get to work. All right, I did it. I finished my essay. It is one in the morning, but I finished everything. I wrote the conclusion. I am done. I'm going to proofread it once more in the morning before I send it in, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Honestly, I've been feeling a little bit of like imposter syndrome, I guess, or like kind of self-doubt as I've been waiting for these PhD decisions. And I've been writing this essay and just been having the hardest time, uh, or at least when I was writing it before, because... I get these moments where I feel like perhaps I am not quite equipped to be writing this kind of research and that I am not prepared for a PhD, but writing that paper and getting to focus on it today really reminded me that I'm doing the right thing. And I have to say like the most rewarding thing in the world is getting to write about the scholarship that I just find so interesting and seeing that there's room in that scholarship for you to also kind of make your own addition to it. It's now one in the morning and I'm exhausted. So it is time to go to sleep and I'm gonna go ahead and sign off of this video. I wanted to take you guys through an essay crisis with me. I have not done one of these videos before but I wanna know if you guys enjoyed it. I would love to see you guys comment down below and if you guys made it all the way to the end of this video leave me a comment down below of a TV show you're really liking at the moment and I'd love to see what shows you guys are watching but I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did please give it a thumbs up if you guys are not yet subscribed please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video bye he started with hello on a summer afternoon I lost myself and everybody else when I found you Told you that I loved you, you weren't ready yet But I had all the time you needed to be here till the end